Kemi P writes, I've seen ombre mentioned a few times as a hot new current trend. I would love to see some layouts showcasing this look. Glittergirl, can you help Biochemi P figure out fantastic fades? Of course I can. The idea of ombre is basically a take on a monochromatic layout because normally it's a single color and then several shades. And there are two ways to do it. You can either have something that fades from a solid um, or one shade to a darker shade and gives you a faded effect by using washes or watercolor, mist, anything like that. Or you can do it with separate pieces of paper. So you could have, um, you could take a punch and use the same punch shape in all different shades of paper. So you could start with something really light and build up to something dark. So I'm going to show you a few different techniques with the ombre idea today. And today is also a really good day to have a look over to the two piece side if you're watching this on YouTube or elsewhere, because there's a great list of links of all different projects that have been made by different scrapbookers using the ombre trend. So that'll give you an even wider idea of um, different ways that you could take this trend. Okay, so the first one I'm going to do is to actually start with a pattern paper that's a single colored pattern. This is a chevron from Bella Boulevard. It has a multicolored polka dot on the other side. And a single colored print will work really well with this if you can then match it with mists or watercolors or um, stamp reinkers, any sort of liquid or paintable medium. Um, that are in the same color range. So you're looking for shades of things. So I have um, the Mr. Huey's color mist in Sunshine and Sherbert to start, and we'll see how that goes. And you can always make something a bit lighter by adding more water. You can use a watercolor and um, just wash over the page from light to dark with, um, with a brush. Foam brushes work particularly well for creating an ombre effect. I'm gonna start with the idea of misting the page. So basically I want my lightest color to be the white shade at this end of the page leading down to the darkest shade at the bottom. So that will be my deep orange. So I'm going to start with the middle color in the middle of the page and I'm just misting across. And not to worry too much about it being blotchy or anything else at this point because I'm, I'm going to build the color. So then I want to put a different color to cover the bottom of the page. And sometimes helps to let it dry a little bit to see how the color is going to come up. Mr. Huey dries quite quickly, so normally not a problem to let it dry just a bit to see what color is going to appear. From that, I can then say, okay, maybe I need a lighter yellow shade, and I can add that at the top. Now, what this, um, my gut instinct here is telling me that the bottom edge needs to be a bit darker. So at this point, you really want to saturate the paper with all the different colors moving up the page so that you have the darkest at the bottom of the page and the lightest at the top fading up to the white. And in this case, I think I'm even going to take a bit of red while this is all saturated with the orange. And I'm going to spray the bottom of the page with just a little bit of red. And with the foam brush, you can then just stipple the color. And it's a great idea to do this sort of misting on a craft sheet or a surface like this where it's not, um, where it's not going to just stick to the surface because you're going to use a lot of mist to cover a full sheet of paper. So this might be a good time where you want, I might want to um, use the extra for some, um, some shading on some other element or anything like that. And with a craft sheet or a resist surface, then you'll be able to pick that up with a sponge and use it. 
While the paper dries, we'll have a look at some different embellishments you can make with an ombre effect. And ombre, essentially, when it's a fade, comes from the idea of dip dyeing. When you take a piece of cloth and dip it into um, some fabric dye, but then take it out again rather than dyeing the entire garment. So we can do the same thing on a really small scale by using mist, or you can also use the reinker from a stamp, and um, anything like that. And then you want to take um, whatever you have and you're going to dye one edge of it. So I have this scrap of fabric and I'm just going to roll it up so that one edge is roughly even and I haven't done an amazing job on that but it will it'll be even enough to demonstrate. So I have all my edges there and I can just pop that edge into the die and the ombre effect basically is banking on the idea of the wicking factor in the fabric. So by placing one end into the die it's going to soak up the color and gradually spread it out throughout the rest of the fabric. Now that does mean that every single time you dye any sort of fabric or textile it's going to pick up the dye a little bit differently so the best thing you can do is just try with different scraps and pieces that aren't going to make you sad if they don't come out the way that you want and then have a look so for example I started with some cream cotton twill and when I did the same exact thing, rolled it up and put it into the saucer of mist, I got this sort of fade where it has a darker edge at one side, um, but it is very gradual because it wicked all the way up to the top. Um, obviously with this fabric, it's not going to wick all the way up to the top. And if I unroll it now, you can see that it's actually a very clean line where it stopped wicking. Now, if you wanted that to be a bit less um, less of a straight line, the best thing you can do at this point is to water it down. So you can either fill the saucer with water or you can just dunk this whole piece into water and experiment with how you'll get that, um, that color spreading out through the rest of the fabric. You can also try creating um, the same effect but having the, the fabric wet before you put it in to the dye and that will change the way it wicks because of the water already in the fabric. So lots of different ways to experiment and different styles of our different types of weaves and, and fabrics will pick up the color in different ways. So I'm just going to try a few different examples and see what happens. Now with a very small ribbon like this it's a little harder to get just that one edge, but I'm going to give it a try. The trick here is actually to be patient, and on camera I never am. Okay, so that's one quite well. I'll just, just do that little bit. and that, because it's so small, is going to pick up the color instantly. So there's no ombre effect there on that tiny one, but I do now have a nice bright orange ribbon. I'll try the next one, and it is kind of important to make sure you don't end up with too much dye on your hands because you can uh, spread it to the next piece of fabric that you pick up if you're doing more than one. So try a wider ribbon with a bit of trim at one side. And now I have just, just the um, trim there. This time I was really just tapping because since the other one died entirely, I was a little worried that it would wick too quickly. So you can see it just takes a little bit of trial and error. And the best thing to do is to try it on different little scraps of ribbon. And then when you figure out exactly the look that you're going for, then cut your longer piece. Um, I also wanted to try something a little bit 
less likely, and that's this velvet ribbon or trim. So we'll give that a whirl. And that turns out quite lovely indeed. Another thing I thought would be a good extension from that is to try the fabrics from Studio Caligo because these are fabric on one side but they are adhesive on the other. And this first piece is one that I tried with that same technique. I just um, touched it against, uh, against something a few times so that it wouldn't have as much glue on the back. And then I could wrap it around itself and still be able to um, to unfurl it. And I wasn't too happy with the way the color worked on that small piece. So I tried a second idea and that was to leave the strip on the sheet and to paint the color on with a paintbrush just right on the backing sheet. Just run the color down the side. And that really did create an ombre effect so I have a dark edge and a light edge that's really easily defined. And it was a lot less messy as well. So um, fabrics definitely work that way. And another thing you can try with fabrics and some other things is you can also get a, an ombre effect with Copic markers because they're meant to blend. So just show you here in the bottom corner a little bit of an idea I'll make this go up here a bit bigger. And perhaps I use the bigger end of the pen. So you want to cover the whole space that you're going to use in the lighter shade, the lightest shade of the Copic pen that you're going to use. Then do the middle shade and start in the, in the middle and color down to the end. Don't worry about the line in the middle at this point. Repeat that one more time with the darkest shade just at the bottom. Then you reverse it. Come back up here. And blend those colors together. And take the light color and then pull it up just a bit more. And you'll get that graduated effect over the fabric and you can just decide how much you want to use and which way you want the fade to go and the pens will work right on top of the fabric. So all sorts of different ideas you can use for the embellishment and I definitely think I'm going to use this velvet ribbon which has picked it up and kind of spread it across the fabric so that I have some pieces that are really really orange and some pieces that are a lot more white and I like how that makes it definitely look like it was dip dyed rather than something that I painted on in a straight line or was printed there in the factory. So I think I'm going to go with that one and I might use this um, this fabric strip as well and then I'll go get that uh, piece of orange ombre paper and off we go. In addition to the faded or ombre uh, Bella Boulevard chevron paper, I'm using some travel photos today so those are going on a craft cardstock background and then I've pulled out two shades of blue to complement the orange and those are both from the Shoreline collection by American Crafts and a couple of these 6x6 pages from the Abroad collection by Studio Calico. Those are also available in a 12x12. And from here, I'm going to trim down the ombre paper just a bit so that I have a frame on that and um, on the ombre background and then build all my other elements on top of that. Matted the trimmed ombre paper with some navy blue cardstock just to anchor it and also give it a little bit more strength because the pattern paper will be a little less um, strong after it's had all that uh, dye put into it. Um, it's not bad in the slightest but it's just nicer to have an extra layer I think. And then I'm going to use three 4x6 photos in a row here. So I'm going to go ahead and 
adhere those over the top, I know that I'm going to add some bits and pieces to the sides. So I'm just keeping the adhesive a little bit away from those edges so that I'll be able to tuck in those other pieces. line those three up and then I have that faded effect on both sides and I can start with my embellishment. I want to pull in the two shades of blue and then also a little bit of a travel motif um, with some of those matte pieces in the embellishment. I'm going to start working on this side with a piece of the navy blue pattern that's just just over an inch maybe an inch and a half wide and once I've got that in place, I don't want to cover up too much more of that faded background from top to bottom because I want to have plenty of it on show to get the effect. So then I'm going to layer up a few pieces on top of that. So I think I will add in a smaller strip of that stripe, just trimmed very small, just a, about a quarter of an inch. And I'm also going to add in that faded ribbon. So I'll just move the the blue over so that I can make sure that it's still going to show once I put the ribbon on top and I'll glue all those pieces down. With that all in place then I can get started on the embellishment and I've just cut some different uh, pieces of pattern paper to start building a little piece for my title here. So I'm just going to start by tucking those underneath these layers starting from the tallest piece, which is a six inch uh, pattern and upside down. Ah. And, and I just use the pattern rather than a measurement. I wanted to just even up the circle so that they're cut in roughly the same place on the pattern. And then the map print is cut a little bit shorter than that. That's going to get tucked underneath there as well. And that way I'm separating the two navy blues. So this navy and that navy are not exactly the same. But if I separate them with another pattern paper in between, I have a bit more luck. There's a lot of vertical lines going on in this layout. So I want to make sure I counter that with a few horizontal lines so that I can have a place for letters to sit and things like that. So I'm going to add a few bits of washi tape. Just tuck that underneath. This blue one comes in a set from My Mind's Eye, a set of three from the Indie Chic collection. And then we use a yellow one from Hambly. And one thing to keep in mind with ombre, ombre papers and washi tape is that the thinner washi tapes, the ones that are more transparent, will let the fade show through the tape. So that might be something that's useful for your layout as you're working on it, just to keep in mind. And then a little circle of blue pattern paper with some cameras on. This is actually from the new Amy Tangerine line that will be arriving shortly. And that gives me a good place to go ahead and add my title. So we're going to use the matte printed thickers that match the Studio Calico um, Abroad collection. Just starting with the larger letters and then I'm going to go back and add the first word with a smaller set of letter stickers. The smaller letter stickers I'm going to use are the Jelly Bean Alpha Beans in a sort of denim blue. They call it diced denim. And I just wanted to point those out because I find that navy blue letters are quite, well navy blue in anything in scrapbooking can be a little harder to find. I think it's a bit more of a difficult pigment to make papers in and make things match. So we see a little bit less of it. And um, so this is, it's nice when you do find a good navy blue to make sure you have it because it's a very versatile color and it's a good switch up from, uh, from black or really dark brown if you need a nice neutral. So 
and it comes with both the lowercase and the uppercase. So I'm going to use the uppercase um, for the first word in the title and then the lowercase for the location below the title. With the title all in place, I just want to add a date sticker um, or a label sticker with the date. So this one from Jelly Bean includes that navy blue that I've just used in the stickers for the lettering, but also orange around the edge. So that's actually the birthday label set from Jelly Bean Soup. And then to mimic that, I'm going to add another label up in this top corner. Now normally I would go with a horizontal placement which would put it too far over the photo. So I'm just going to add a little bit of ink to make that a little less dark. And then my plan is to add it to the side instead. So I'll add just a tiny bit of something horizontal by using that same combination of washi tape and having it overlap just in the background of the picture, not um, not over the subject, the statue. So those can just tuck around the edge. And then that label can go right over the top there. And this way I still have that tiny little bit of the orange showing there. So you still get the ombre effect all the way up to the top. And from there I wanted to add some little badge style embellishments. I had this Go See Do one from the um, Studio Calico Abroad collection. And then also just picked up some, t um, some new badges from Armulu and liked the idea of a to and from because this was a stopping point in between one big city and another. So I um, used that one and then thought I could also pick up the orange from this little tag that says fabulous. So I still haven't added my writing at this point which is a little bit rare for me. So I'm, I think I want that one a little bit higher on the page. So this one down here and overlap it with the circle that's in the pattern paper to connect those two shapes. And unfortunately these are a little bit too wide to put in that gap there. So there's not really a great place for one to go up in this corner where I would normally mirror the embellishment here. So I think what I need to do is get my writing in place, which is going to need to go in this space somewhere. And then I'll use those last two badges to um, embellish around the edge of that. One last little thing I know I'm going to do is to wrap some baker's twine around this uh, so that it goes alongside the ribbon. And I just picked up a, a light blue shade so that it'll match the pattern paper that's next to the ribbon there. And I'll just loop this around and then have enough to tie. Maybe I won't use quite that much. Do one fewer loops. There we go. And if I tie this up toward the top of the page, then I could start my writing from there and have it link down to the title. So that sounds like a good plan. It turned out best to keep all three badges in a little triangle in this area of the page that has more going on with writing and title and embellishment. I added one little label sticker to clarify the to and from, and um, that's pretty much it. So that's this week's page finish, but please do pop over to have a look in the links to all the different styles of ombre scrapbooking that you can give a try. And guess what your challenge is this week? Your challenge is to take on the ombre look, and I hope that you'll share your work with us in the gallery this week. Thanks so much for watching. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.